Awesome. Thanks for uh, first, first and foremost, thanks for giving me that opportunity to, to share what we're up to at Outseta uh, with your community art. It's, it's nice to meet all of you. Um, certainly, I would prefer that this is as conversational as possible. So if you do have questions, um, throw them, throw them into the chat. Art, please, please interrupt me. Um, I'd rather, you know, speak directly to people and their interests rather than just lead you through too formal of a demo. Um, but to, to start, um, you know, really just want to introduce myself, what Outseta is and who it might be useful to. Um, I will show you the product and some of the common use cases, uh, but let's let's dive right in. Uh, so I'm I'm Jeff. I'm calling from San Diego, California. I'm one of the co-founders of Outseta. Um, we are a business that's uh, gained a lot of popularity in the no-code community just in the last couple of years. Uh, but we've actually been at this for for quite a while. Um, Outseta is almost six years old now. Uh, and I like to start introducing the product just by giving you a little bit of our origin story. Um, so we are sort of a traditional software as a service company uh, and our co-founding team worked at another software company previously where my, my co-founder at Outseta, his name is Dimitri, he was the CTO, I was kind of the business user. And as we scaled that business, I was kind of tugging on his shirt saying, you know, we need a serious billing system. We need to, to set up Stripe. We need uh, marketing attribution. We need something or uh, marketing automation, excuse me. We need something like HubSpot. We need uh, Zendesk for customer support and we need a CRM and we need to integrate all these tools together. Uh, and the, the truth is that's a journey that every sort of subscription business goes on. And, and what we realized um, through that experience is there was a real cost to the time that we spent integrating all these different software tools that our business was reliant on. We had a, a software engineer uh, integrating all these tools so that they would speak to each other. And in the context of a relatively early stage resource constrained company, what that means is it was time taken away from what, what really matters, which is sort of building our core product. Uh, we were like building all this uh, software tooling to support our business rather than than building the product itself. Um, so we ended up building sort of a early version of Outseta without knowing it in the context of that business. And when we were ready to move on and, and work on something else, we said, you know, if you're trying to start like a an e-commerce store, there are products out there like Shopify that make it really, really easy for you to um, from a technology perspective, launch your business. So you can kind of focus entirely on whatever your product is and how you can bring that product to market. But the technology piece is kind of figured out for you. You can have an e-commerce store out of the box almost. And when we looked at other types of online subscription businesses, uh, we realized there wasn't the equivalent. There wasn't a single platform that sort of brought together all of the tools that you would need to launch a subscription or membership style business. So that's what Outseta is. Uh, if you have any sort of, of business um, where you charge users on a recurring basis, there's some software that you're gonna need sort of no matter what. You're gonna need subscription billing to charge your customers um, those subscription fees. You're gonna need a CRM to kind of track uh, all of your customers. You're gonna need email marketing tools to communicate with them. Ultimately, you're gonna need some kind of financial reporting so you can view the the financial performance of your business. Like these are sort of table stakes features that all of these businesses require. Uh, yet even technical founders were going out and like purchasing five or 10 different tools and spending all this time integrating them together. So that's the problem that Outseta solves. We do uh, absolutely have customers that are more, more technical. We do sell to other software companies like ourselves. Um, and that's certainly one of the use cases I'll talk a little bit about today. But about two, three years ago, we really got discovered um, almost by accident within the no-code community. And what we realized very quickly was the fact that all these tools are already sort of perfectly integrated and can be added to any website very, very quickly, completely without code, means that Outseta is that much more valuable to a no-coder than somebody that is really technical and does have kind of the perfect skill set to integrate a whole bunch of tools. So just as no code is sort of enabling people to build things that they wouldn't have been able to, to build on their own before, Outset is doing the same thing. We're, we're giving you a really, really easy way to launch any sort of recurring revenue business 
Uh, and what I'd like to do is talk you through um, a few of the common use cases, and then I'll jump into to showing you the actual product itself. So there are four uh, use cases um, that I'm going to talk a little bit about, just so if you're on the other end of this call, you can say, okay, these are um, scenarios where I might consider using Outseta. Uh, and the first one is going to be if you're building any sort of uh, software product, any sort of SaaS product. Um, SaaS products are typically sold on uh, a subscription basis. So that's kind of the first element you always want to look for. Um, but our own business is a perfect example of this. Um, so you're looking at our, our own website today. Uh, if you wanted to sign up for our software, you might visit our pricing page. You could say, hey, I want the startup plan for $79 a month. And this is when you first begin interacting with Outseta. This, this form right here um, is an Outseta component. This is how you capture payments and, and first get subscribers into Outseta. Um, but the cool thing about our business, and you'll see this as I jump into showing you the product, is our entire business is built on our own product. So everything from how you sign up for Outseta to how you log into our software um, to how we communicate with our customers and track our revenue and all those kinds of things happens within the context of our own uh, product. So we're um, sort of dog fooding our own product um, to the, the maximum extent, which I'll, I'll show you a bit more of shortly. Second use case is going to be any sort of uh, membership site. So when I say membership site, these are typically websites that are charging you um, some sort of subscription fee for, for access to content or tutorials or um, just protected content on a website. So if you have uh, anything like that, you say, I've got um, you know, knowledge of some sort, again, whether it's written content, videos, whatever, and you want to protect that and charge membership fees to access your content. Um, traditional membership sites are, are very much um, sort of the second big bucket of users that, that use Outseta. The third um, is actually uh, communities uh, much like no-code devs. So online communities are a third um, common theme. Um, communities can be built on any sort of online community platform. Circle um, is, is certainly the most common, um, but we've got Slack communities, we have Discord communities, we have communities built on a product called Tribe. Um, in either case, the common thread is you're paying subscription or membership fees for access to the community itself. And when you join the community, depending on sort of the membership tier um, that you purchase, you get access to different parts of the community where you can engage with the community's network and see different resources and all those sorts of things uh, based on the membership that you signed up for. And then the last one that I'll throw out there, um, this is one that we talk about less, but we're, we're um, sort of seeing a lot of growth in this market. And this is where a lot of people are sort of getting introduced to Outsider today, is if you're just any kind of freelancer or small agency um, that sells your services on any sort of recurring revenue or retainer basis, Outseta can really be a tech stack for your like personal freelance uh, or consulting business. So this is actually an example. Um, I'm not really doing any consulting work anymore myself uh, because I'm focused on Outseta at this point. But as we were growing Outseta in the early days, um, we've bootstrapped it the, the whole time and I was taking on consulting work uh, but I use our own product to run my consulting business as well. So what you're looking at here is just a really basic uh, website built on card. Obviously, there's a picture of me, a little bit about myself, um, a few pages that introduce my, my skills and experience. Uh, but if you click hire me, this is Outseta again, and users can actually pick um, sort of what product they want and, and sign up to work with me on a consulting basis going forward. And the thing that's really cool about that use case is if you've ever been a consultant or a freelancer, one of the challenges is you're constantly chasing clients for, for invoices and for payments. And uh, that that's just tough if you're relying on freelance income um, you know, to, to pay your bills and whatnot. So if you do use Outseta, one thing that's really nice is your customers punch in a credit card and then Outseta just collects payment for you every month whenever your payments are due. So you can kind of forget about um, this notion of sending invoices to your clients and waiting for them to send you checks and all of that. Um, you just get paid on time every month. 
so those are the four big use cases, SaaS products, membership sites, online communities, um, and sort of freelancer consulting businesses. Um, if you're building any of those and have specific questions on how you can use Outset in those contexts, by all means, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, my email is just jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, at outsetta.com. And I'd be happy to, to go into more detail on, on any of those. Uh, but with that as kind of context, uh, I want to show you what Outset actually looks like on, on the inside. So this is uh, our own Outset account. And if you look down this left-hand sidebar, you can see all of the major feature sets that the product includes. Uh, there's the CRM. That's where we store all of our customer information. There's a full email marketing suite. Um, so this is similar to like a MailChimp or a ConvertKit. There's a help desk. Um, this includes tools for, for chat, support ticketing, a knowledge base, um, comparable to like Zendesk or, or Intercom, those sorts of tools. Um, there's the actual billing system where you set up your subscriptions and your pricing plans. Uh, authentication tools. This is how people can log in and out of your site. And then there's also reporting. So none of the things that I'm going to show you here uh, are, are terribly unique. You've seen all of these categories of software before. What's unique is that they're delivered in a single platform. And we're very, um, very straightforward in, in saying, like, if you assess Outseta against the more specialized software tools that we compete against, we don't have perfect feature parity. And that that's OK. Part of uh, what we what we sell is this idea of if you use a MailChimp, for example, you are probably not using all of the features, even if you're paying for it. There's two thirds or 80 percent of the feature set that is really used on a day to day basis. That's most important that you're getting the most value out of. And that's kind of what we deliver in our product. It's like the core feature that you need to get your business off the ground, start to grow. Um, and our, our mindset is having all these tools pre-integrated is much, much more powerful and much, much more useful in the context of an early stage business than maybe the 20% of features that outside it doesn't yet have. So that's, that's something to think about as we, um, sort of go through this demo, I will show you a bunch of, um, a bunch of ways that these tools being interconnected helps you and saves you time. And the other thing um, before we get into actually looking at the features I, I want to throw out there at the start is there's really two sort of key value propositions that Outseta delivers to our customers. The first one, 100%, is around speed to market. So it's how fast can you stand up and launch a subscription or membership business? And going back to this theme of what really matters time spent integrating software is not a good use of your time in the context of an early stage business. Uh, what matters is time spent building your SaaS product, time built um, developing your content if it's a membership site, time built um, getting new people into your community and making sure that your community members are engaging with one another. That focus on your core product is going to have a lot more to do with your success. Uh, than how much time you spend actually integrating your software. So helping you launch quickly is, is the first value proposition and why people tend to, to buy outside it in the first place. Beyond that, the second one becomes um, kind of something I talk about in, in two ways, but we can bring a lot of calm uh, to where there is often sort of software chaos. So if you run a business where you've stitched together, you know, five or 10 different software tools, um, you know that those integrations and those apps um, and all that kind of stuff can can break and you have issues with data dropout and all of that. Um, so just kind of bringing a little bit of order um, is, is definitely a second part of our value, but also allowing you to set up a lot of these workflows that are really common in the context of a subscription business um, without needing to integrate tools um, just allows you to, to sort of uh, operate your business much, much more efficiently. So I'll, I'll point out um, those things as we go. But what I'd like to do next uh, is just kind of take you through how you actually adopt this product and what you would typically do as a new customer. So the first thing you, you're going to do, uh, most people come to us and say, you know, I need to put some sort of 
payments functionality on my website. Um, I need a way to charge my customers. So you come over to billing, click on settings, and you connect to Stripe. Outset, it does process payments uh, through Stripe, but a big part of uh, the value that we deliver is once you connect to Stripe, you don't ever need to log into Stripe again. Uh, you can change your prices, you can view invoices, you can issue refunds, basically anything you need to do from a financial perspective, you can do directly in your Outset account. So you connect to Stripe and you can forget that Stripe exists. From there, you're going to dive into setting up your pricing plans. So our billing system is built around this idea that we call pricing agility. And most of our customers are relatively early stage startups. They don't necessarily know what their pricing should be or even what their pricing model should be. So we make it uh, really easy to experiment and test different pricing models. Um, so as you're coming here to set up your subscription plans, um, first and foremost, this is a pretty unique feature for us. Um, we support what we call both team-based subscriptions and individual subscriptions. So almost all of the other membership software products out there um, offer individual subscriptions. That basically means each person needs to sign up for their own membership, their own subscription. Uh, but if you sell to companies or teams, uh, we allow you to sell a subscription or membership that one person pays for. Uh, but then multiple people can sort of share access uh, to that subscription and everybody has their own login credentials. There's a pretty um, wide range of pricing models we support. So you can do regular sort of recurring billing, um, set up monthly rates, quarterly rates, or annual rates. You can sell one-time products. We support per user pricing. And one of the first ways you can see the value of all these tools being interconnected is if you wanted to set up a plan and say, there's a maximum number of people that can sign up for this plan, uh, you can do that very easily because the billing system and the authentication system are all part of the same product. So if you set up a plan and say, only five people can subscribe to this plan, outside as authentication tool realizes that you've set up that rule and will not allow a sixth person to sign up, uh, it will prompt them to instead upgrade in that scenario. So that sounds like kind of a trivial thing, but if you've ever tried to set up a pricing model like that with a separate authentication system and a separate billing system, um, even for a developer, that is a heck of a lot of work. For a no-coder, that's probably, frankly, a showstopper and something you wouldn't be able to set up. So that's just one example. Uh, but beyond that, we support you know, free trials. You can charge setup fees. You can have um, subscriptions that end on a particular date. You can sell add-on products in addition to your subscriptions. So the idea here is we give just give you a lot of flexibility um, in terms of the types of, of products that you offer. Another um, feature that is uh, sort of unheralded is um, this notion of clan families. So this is a way of grouping together pricing plans. So think of a basic, a pro and an enterprise plan. You could put those three plans into a plan family and you can set up as many plan families as you want with an Outseta and then simply toggle your plan families on or off. So a way that this can be used is you might want to advertise three plans on your website today during the month of August. And then September 1st, you might say, I just want to try three different plans that have completely different prices or different pricing models, whatever it might be. With a single toggle, you can change the pricing that displays both on your website um, and if you have any sort of pricing in your product, it can update in your product too. So you can run these pricing experiments completely without needing a developer, completely without writing any code. Um, so it's one of these ways that we're helping less technical users do things that typically would require uh, quite a bit of development help. That's uh, the billing system in short. Um, you know, there's other stuff in here. You, you can set up discounts and all the sorts of things you can do with, with most billing systems today. Uh, but that is where people start. Once you've set up your plans, uh, then you come over here to this auth tab and how out set up actually integrates with your website, with your community, whatever it is that you're building, uh, is we have a single script here that we call our quick start script. You would drop that into the header of your website. 
And then we just provide these links that will trigger the sign up process, the login process, uh, and also allow users to manage their subscription and log out. So just as an example uh, of that, back to our website, I, I showed this previously, um, but all this website has going on is that one quick start script added in the header. And then like this sign up link is tied to um, you know, sign up buttons like this. So when a user clicks it, we open up the, the checkout process um, for the user. And likewise, that, that login link, um, this login button right here uh, is just triggered by this, this login link. So all of that is to say, if you are comfortable enough with technology to drop a code uh, into the header of your website and tie a URL to, to a button or a link on your site, you can implement Outseta and be sort of off and running um, in just a few minutes. This, um, this other uh, section here where you see sign up, login, and profile, these are the three integration points between Outseta um, and your, your site, your community, your product, whatever it is that you're building. Um, and this is also a really good way to demonstrate uh, how we've latched on to this idea of visual development. You hear that a lot from, from Webflow, but the idea is um, you can kind of tell us uh, what experience you want, and we essentially write the code for you so that as a no-coder, um, you can do all the sorts of things that typically only a software engineer could do. So if I click sign up here, this is a tool that you can use to essentially build your sign up forms. And uh, this is also a great way to kind of experiment with the experience that a user would actually have on your site. So for example, here, uh, we start out by asking you when building a signup form, do you want to embed your signup form directly on a page? Do you want a pop-up like I showed you that we're using on our website? Um, or you can also create a, what we call a payment link. This is just a link to a page where somebody can sign up for any of your subscription plans. So for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna say, I wanna sign up form to embed on a page. And rather than allowing the user to choose from all these different plans, we're gonna pre-select a plan and it's gonna be our growth plan. And as you make those sorts of changes, we will show you exactly what your sign up form would look like over here. You can jump up here and customize the design. So you can change the colors, the fonts, um, you know, all that kind of stuff so that the form matches the aesthetic of your website. But once you like what that form looks like, you just click install your embed and we've written the code for you. So you just get a code snippet. You can drop this into your website page and this exact form is then added to your page. And that works the same way. Like if I said, I want a payment link, I just click install your embed. Instead of writing code for you, we give you a link in this case. And if you wanted to send an email to somebody and say, hey, why don't you sign up for our, our growth plan membership? you can just send them this link and here's a sign up form that, that they can use to actually sign up. So that's uh, what the implementation process looks like. Basically, you just need to add uh, sign up, login and profile links or buttons to your website. Um, we haven't talked about the, the profile embed yet, but this is um, the third integration point and this is essentially a self-service customer portal. So a user can log in, they can edit some information about themselves, kind of maintain their own personal profile. But this is also how they would invite team members. If you're using team-based memberships, um, the user can upgrade, downgrade, or cancel their subscription, and they can also edit their billing information. So you're giving the customer the, the control of their subscription or membership. So if they want to change anything, um, they don't have to come asking you, they can, they can make those changes themselves. But these are sort of the integration points. Um, once you kind of set this stuff up on your site, you are up and operational. Um, you can sign up users, accept their payments, they can log in, they can you know, access whatever content you choose to protect. Um, if you do want to set up protected content on your site, you just come down here, uh, you click add protected content. You could say, uh, I want to add some members only content. And on my website, I've got a page that's going to be you know, your website.com slash members, and then you just grant people access to that content. So in this particular example, I'm saying if someone comes to our website, we have a page that's, you know, at setter.com slash members, and you can only access that content if you log in and have the growth plan. 
Um, so that's kind of how content is protected and you can um, control access to who can see what. But after uh, all of that is configured, then you get into the tools that are really used to manage your business on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and that starts with the CRM. And this is really where you start to see the value of all of these tools being pre-integrated kick in. So if someone comes to our website and signs up for a plan, as soon as they subscribe, we automatically create a CRM record for that new member, for that new subscriber. It pulls in the plan that they're on, how much they're paying, uh, the start date and renewal date. And one of the things that's really unique about our CRM is you can make changes to your customer's uh, membership or subscription directly from their CRM record. So if I wanted to change when the subscription renewed, if I wanted to change their subscription, if I wanted to cancel their subscription, I can do that directly from their CRM record. Likewise, I can pull up all their past invoices. If I wanted to issue them a refund, I can do so right here from their invoice. And there's also things like this, where it says customer lifetime revenue. This is the actual amount of money that this customer has paid us over the time that they've been using our product. And it just updates in real time as new payments are collected. So this is typically something like a lot of companies that I've worked at that are subscription businesses would love this type of insight but they need to integrate their, their billing system with some sort of reporting tool and then display that data in their, in their CRM. It's, it's definitely possible. Like there are companies that have this level of insight, but it's ultimately taken a pretty technical person a good amount of time to actually deliver that information. Whereas when you sign up with that settle, all this stuff just starts to happen for you automatically. Another um, really interesting aspect of our CRM that is quite unique and, and really goes to show that we're built for software businesses and membership sites and online communities is you can track exactly how users are engaging uh, with your content, with your site, with your product directly on their CRM record. So if I come here to engagement, these are things that we care about in the context of our business. These are sort of important milestones in terms of how people use our software. But if you had a membership site, for example, you might want to know which videos are actually being watched and are kind of valuable to our members, things, things like that. Um, and you can uh, basically set up these engagement events within Outseta. So for us right now, I'm looking at people that are on a free trial of our software. And I want to know who's setting up pricing plans, who's using support tickets, um, who's using our chat features, those kinds of things. Um, and I can see that right here in aggregate for everybody that's on trial. So I use that information from a sales perspective. Um, and basically what I do is I say the people that are on trial that are engaging with the product the most are most likely to become paying customers. So those are the people that I tend to spend my time with and I get that insight uh, right here um, directly from within Outseta. But I can also flip this over to subscribing. And in this case, I'm looking at our existing paying customers and I can see you know, like what features they're using, what content they're engaging with. And I can use this in much more of a customer service capacity. So I could say, I know that this one particular customer is using features A and B, but not C and D. I should reach out to them, explain how features C and D are useful to them and help them get that much more value out of our product, our content, uh, whatever it might be by doing so. So the engagement tracking thing, um, you can see all that engagement data here in aggregate, but you can also see it directly on each customer's CRM record. So just by pulling up a customer CRM record, you know, you can make any changes you want um, to their, their subscription, their membership. You can see how they're engaging with your site, with your content. Um, you can see all the other information you've captured from them over time. Um, so it's just a very complete record of, of what's going on with, with each of your users. Aside from that, I um, want to show segments real quick. So this is kind of, I would call it the, um, the sleepy powerful feature uh, within Outseta. So because you have all of your CRM data, all of your communication data, all of your billing data flowing into the same system, you can create, uh, we, you can create what we call segments, which are just users with some sort of shared characteristic. 
And a really basic example that pretty much every one of our customers will set up is a segment that uses the conditions account subscription plan. Uh, we can say equals, and then let's say again, the growth plan. If I create this segment, Outset will go out and find every person within our account that is on the growth subscription plan. So it's just a way to keep completely up-to-date lists in this case of who's on a particular subscription plan. Um, and then I can use these segments to trigger emails or target automations or those sorts of things. Um, so just, just an easy way to um, target very specific groups of users um, from within your outside account. But while that's if, a- <clears throat> if, if, if I could just offer an example of one way we used it uh, in sort of the opposite way, was sure. uh, we created a segment for people that were inactive and we set up some sort of rule. Um, let's say it was a person has not logged into their account after a certain amount of days, let's call it 10. Not yep. sure what the exact number was, but after that happened, they'd be added to this segment. And if they got added to the segment, then we'd fire off what we would call like an engagement email drip campaign where every five days they would get some sort of email to try to bring them back in to be an active user. So again, sleepy feature, but super powerful. That would take a ton of time to figure out and then like write all the, you know, send all these emails manually. This does it all automatically. Um, yep. Very cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah, that that's exactly um, th this workflow that that you see here, and and you you hit the nail on the head. Um, so with any sort of subscription business, like what what kills subscription and membership businesses is is churn. Uh, if you have users that become disengaged and stop using your product and cancel, um, that is sort of how you die a slow death. Um, so anything you can do that in an automated fashion keeps people engaged is is going to be hugely beneficial. Um, and that, that's exactly what, what this segment is. This segment um, looks for people that haven't logged in in 14 days. As soon as we see that somebody hasn't logged in in 14 days, uh, we then send an automated email uh, that goes out and says, you know, hey, did you need help on boarding? Do you have feedback? Um, what went wrong, essentially? So those, those sorts of automations, um, you know, think about it in the sense of an online community. Um, an online community is only as valuable um, as the members are engaged. So keeping people coming back to the community, um, understanding why they're leaving, that sort of insight is really critical in running a successful business. And in short, like that is what Outseta does versus a lot of the other membership software providers. All of the membership software providers um, allow you to collect payments, allow users to log in, um, allow you to protect your content and that's great like those are key features to launching a membership site uh, or an online community or whatever it is but the objective is not to just launch one of these businesses ultimately the objective is to grow your member base to grow your revenue and how outsider is really unique and really our big point of differentiation is it's not just about here are the tools to launch that site it's here are the tools to launch that site but also to, to grow your business, to add more members, to keep your existing members engaged, um, to communicate with, with those members in um, automated or, or non-automated ways. Um, so it, it's, it's not just uh, sort of tooling to launch these businesses, it's also tooling uh, specifically designed to, to grow these sorts of companies. But that's the, that's the CRM. Uh, aside from that, I'm going to go through email pretty quickly. The, the email tools you've all seen, email marketing tools, um, Outsetta is, is fairly similar. You can send email broadcasts. Um, think of these as just one-off emails. We use these to promote blog posts and company updates and all those sorts of things. Um, or you can create automated drip campaigns. Um, we have two of these running at present, that sort of win back campaign that I just spoke to, but also uh, a series of emails that that go out to people who do sign up for a free trial. So if you sign up, we've got sort of an onboarding sequence that goes out to you um, during the course of your trial uh, that automatically gets triggered when somebody does sign up for a trial of Outseta. Um, and then last but not least, there is a sent log too. So you can see um, for any of uh, your, any of the emails sent via Outseta, um, whether they were delivered in red. So you do get insight to um, just on the deliverability of your emails and you can ensure that those emails um, have have landed in the inbox and been read and that kind of thing. 
uh, but that's the email tools. And then we've got the help desk. So the help desk uh, comes back to the idea that I just mentioned that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you do have this member base that you need to support and help grow. Uh, and there's really three tools that help you do that. The first is um, the support ticketing system. So the way that this works is you get an email address that's going to be something like uh, support at outsetter.com in our case, or help at your company name.com. Uh, we also give you embeddable forms that you can capture down here uh, that you can add to your website. And I'll show you an example of those real quick. Uh, but in either case, if somebody interacts uh, with one of those forms, here's a help request form, uh, or just email support at outsetter.com, it creates a support ticket that uh, ends up in a shared inbox that looks like this. You can then sort of look at all the, the tickets that have come in. Uh, you can assign the ticket to the appropriate person on your team, uh, and then you respond directly from down here. So it's just a way to make sure that all of those incoming service requests get routed to the same place and aren't getting lost in your, your personal email inbox. There's also a knowledge base. So this is used in different capacities depending on what you're building. Uh, but typically, if you have any sort of um, how-to content or product documentation or just anything that you want to make your members aware of, you can come in here. Uh, you can click add an article. You can write your content, upload videos, screenshots, all that kind of stuff, um, categorize your content however you want to. Um, and then once you flip an article over to published, all of your published content is going to end up uh, on a publicly accessible knowledge base that looks something like this. So this is our own knowledge base. Um, if you use this feature for, for your business, it gets skinned for your company. So it will have you know, your logo, your color scheme. Um, you can design a lot of the different aspects of this page, but users can come here. Uh, they can submit a help request if they want to. They can search through all the content that we've published or maybe they know that um, they like Webflow and they want to know how to integrate outside of Webflow, they can jump right into uh, watching our video tutorials and whatnot. And then the, the very last bit is, is chat. Um, so just like uh, most websites these days, uh, if you come to the bottom uh, right-hand corner of this site, you can launch a chat conversation. Um, oh, this, this site's been taken offline actually. Uh, but if those chat, conversations um, are coming through, they will land in your outside of chat inbox up here. And if the user is logged in, or if it's somebody that you've chatted with before, um, you'll see their name like Josh here. Josh is one of our customers. Um, and the conversation also automatically gets tied to the user's CRM record. So going back to that CRM record as being sort of a single a uh, place with all information about each of your customers and how they're interacting with your uh, product or site, um, you get that full conversational history directly on the CRM, CRM record. If it's someone you haven't talked to before, um, they will show up as unknown. Um, so you do have some settings here as well where you can do things like require uh, an email address in order to, st to start a chat conversation. Um, you can set up autoresponder messages, those sorts of things. Uh, but if you want to have that sort of chat presence on your site, that is the, the third um, tool that we, we offer in the help desk. Beyond that, um, just a few final items um, that are, are sort of lesser but worth mention. Um, another one of the things that people tend to sleep on when they're first starting these businesses um, is things like the need for transactional emails. So what are transactional emails, first of all? Um, if you have any sort of billing system or authentication tool, um, you probably need things like lost password workflows. So in order to support those workflows, there are automated emails that go out that allow users to reset their password, for example. Um, but there's other automated emails that are very common in the context of billing systems. Things like if you try to process a payment and the payment fails, sending an email to the customer, prompting them to update their payment information. We've basically thought through all of these workflows for you. Um, so those emails are here in your account. Um, you can open them up. You can certainly edit them with your own uh, language. But these, again, are sort of um, 
like table stakes, features, and functions required to run one of these sorts of businesses. Uh, but just time gets spent sort of spinning all this stuff up if you choose to do this uh, by integrating a whole bunch of tools rather than just getting all this stuff kind of out of the box. Uh, and then final things would be under settings if you come to integrations. Um, Outside has all kinds of integrations. Uh, you can play with them. I'm not going to speak to them all right now. Um, but we do integrate commonly with circle communities. Um, if you want any sort of like referral program, we have an integration with a product called Rewardful that can be used to pay out people that refer business um, to you. If you want to send um, any sort of notifications to a Slack channel that you use in the context of running your company, uh, you can do those sorts of things. And there's also this notification system. So this is really for your own internal team. Uh, but if you wanted to get any sort of notification um, about important things that are happening amongst your customer base, you can set them up here. So this is the fun one, account paid subscription created. If I jump in and create this notification, every time we get a new paid subscriber on our website, I get an email that says, you know, hey, Jeff, Bob is on your website and he just signed up for your $99 a month plan. Congratulations, that, that kind of thing. Um, so just a nice tool to keep your, your team in the know. And then the absolute last part is just the reporting. So if you come to reporting, there's a couple um, different types of reporting here. We talked about the engagement reporting already. If you click on billing, there is billing reporting as well. So this is gonna be all of your sort of standard subscription metrics, um, things like number of subscribers, monthly recurring revenue, churn. Um, you can look at like trial conversion rates if you use free trials, um, all those sorts of things that are just a barometer for how your business is doing from a financial perspective. Um, and then you can also create your own cancellation surveys. So if you come over here, if somebody does choose to cancel their subscription or membership, you can present them with a list of reasons and you can track uh, essentially those reasons over time. Um, this is actually gonna be most interesting. You can come in here and see comments that are left. Um, so that's really nice sort of qualitative feedback. And then if you go down here, you can see the actual accounts that have been canceled, um, how long they were using your product, how much they paid you over time, all that kind of stuff. Um, so again, this is like, valuable insights that aren't just meant to help you launch the business, but actually optimize the business and make sure you're delivering value to your member base and, and growing your business over time. Uh, but that's really a full tour of the feature set, the use cases, um, you know, what we're, what we're up to at Outseta. So I'll, I'll pause there and uh, see if we have any questions. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, I, even even using the product for quite some time, uh, there there's some nuggets uh, I learned uh, through this through this demo. So thanks for that. I'm sure that sure. Um, others, whether they're familiar with the product or not, you know, might have had the same experience. There's a couple questions, um, of course, from Joe. Of course, what about Zapier, Integromat, whatever integrations? Is that possible? Yep, we have. Um... Lots of different ways that you can integrate with Outsider. So we do have integrations with Zapier and Integromat that are quite robust. You can use either of those to connect to um, other tools. We also support webhooks and we also have an open API. So um, you can connect Outsider to other, other tools via any of those options. Awesome. Yeah. Joe also said earlier on, I missed this, but um, the agency example. Yeah, I, I agree. Like that's super interesting. Um, definitely a use case that, that I wouldn't have thought of probably, but it's actually quite yeah. compelling. And I think, um, the way your pricing works too, it actually works out quite well for, for that type of, uh, that type of example. Cause really the pricing, uh, scales with you as you grow in terms of number of users or clients. Um, so I think that that's a, a great example. Um, uh, there's another question here again from Joe. And if you have any questions, uh, this is certainly the time to ask We're getting close on time, but uh, certainly, you know, ask it now. You can always reach out to Jeff afterwards, but it um, uh, looks like uh, I'm trying to kind of go through this question, but uh, thinking Flutterflow as a front end and outside as the back end, the manager customer relationship subscription, I guess uh, the question is like, would that something like that be possible? Um, 
Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. So, so I'd said it is completely tech stack agnostic, which is a, a point I, I probably should have made, but a big part of our philosophy is regardless of what you're building, you could be a developer building a software product. You could be a no coder building a site on Webflow or Wix or any other um, website builder. You could be building an online community on any of the platforms I mentioned. Our mindset is however you want to deliver your, your product or your website or your community, go ahead and do it. Outseta can then plug into whatever platform that you're most comfortable with and give you the whole feature set that we mentioned, accept payments and grant access to that thing and um, give you the, the tool set that, that we mentioned. So um, as long as you can drop that single script into the header of whatever website builder you're thinking of using or whatever front end you're thinking of using, um, you can use the full feature set here. Awesome. And I'll share my experience, uh, you know, from my point of view, what we're out set at has been, you know, very helpful as well. And it's, it comes to those transactional emails. Uh, you know, a lot of times people churn probably by accident, <laughs> right? Uh, they, their credit card expires or uh, they, it gets lost or stolen and, and they, you know, don't realize it's tied to a subscription and they just churn because the credit card's bad. And so many times, uh, you know, I think if you were sort of a, you know, as a no code builder, which I am, if you, if you hack, you know, sort of hack it together, uh, you know, maybe that, 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 that happens without you even noticing. It is definitely possible. Outseta comes in and sort of saves the day because they send these transactional emails to that customer and say like, hey, you know, hey person, your your credit card has expired. We tried to bill you, but it didn't work. Can you please update your credit card on file? And I will actually see in the CRM, you know, uh, you know, email sent and then person updated card, then billing went through successfully. And it's like, wow, that's a, uh, that's a team member I didn't know I had, you know, working for me uh, when I sleep. So um, that kind of little stuff really makes a huge difference when you're uh, trying to run and start a business. So um, there's another question here uh, for someone using Outseta as a consultant. Can they make notes on each customer's profile in the CRM when and if they're having a meeting or, or interaction? Yep, ab absolutely. So uh, I didn't really get into this activity feed, but on each of your um, account records, which are sort of the main record type within the CRM, um, a lot of stuff is going to get populated automatically. So if uh, a support ticket is submitted or someone logs in or someone signs up for a mailing list or you have an email interaction, you'll see all of that gets pulled into this feed automatically. But you also have the ability to jump in here um, if you were using this to, to manage, say, consulting clients or coaching clients. You could say, like, met with Jeff on 8-3 um, and, you know, leave whatever sort of notes that you want to. So it is um, that central repository for basically all information pertaining to a given customer. Yeah, awesome. Hopefully that answers your question, Travis. Um, yep. Any other questions? We're, we're just about out of time. I know I've got um, something else I got to jump to in about seven minutes. But um, yeah, let's just say, uh, I think Jeff, uh, your email was jeff at adseta.com. That's so, it. Yep. If they need to reach you, uh, you can do that. Or you can just go to their website uh, and chat them. They are pretty responsive in my experience. And I'm sure we'll be happy to help you. And uh you know, if you have any, if you have any other questions, uh, you know, whether it's about using a set with like different, different platforms, whether it be like Webflow or, you know, whatever it might be card, even, uh, that's a great example. You know, I'd be happy, uh, to, to help, uh, with, you know, directing you to the right place for getting those questions answered. So I think that that probably wraps it up. Thanks Jeff for doing this. This was yeah. awesome. Um, a ton of stuff in here. We will, it's recorded. So we'll, you know, kind of like clean it up, uh, and then publish it. Uh, within 24 hours. That sounds great. Thanks so much for having me. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Mm.